In this final video for um, uh, topic five, I'm going to talk about a surprisingly helpful equation, uh, oddly enough, and the reason I call it that is because it's one that's it's on your data booklet and almost no one looks at it, and it's shockingly uh, helpful. Um, so first of all, it's going to help later on to explain what an electron volt is. So when we do the, um, the topic about um, nuclear physics, this is going to come in really handy. And a lot of people don't understand why we measure energy in electron volts and why we use that. This equation actually shows up as the very first equation in this topic on your uh, data booklet. It goes like this. This is the equation here. So V E equals one half M V squared. Now this V right here is a large one, it's a capital V, and this one here is a small V, it's important, right? This is a distinction here. Well, you may recognize this right here, half mv squared, do you remember? It's kinetic energy. So that's E with a little k here. That's a kinetic energy. So here, we're like, it's like we're measuring an energy of something. And what this really represents, okay, so this VE, is the kinetic energy of, um, let's say, an electron uh, that has been accelerated Uh, through a potential difference of one volt. So I'm doing a lot of writing right now, but this is actually pretty important here. All right, so VE. Well, that's the kinetic energy of an electron. It actually doesn't he even have to be an electron. It could be any charged particle. But an electron, for example, that's been accelerated through a potential difference of one volt. Which means you take a little electron and you, uh, you send it through some potential difference. And that's going to accelerate that electron. It's going to zip along. It's going to be, you know, accelerated. It's going to go from a certain speed to a much faster speed. And how fast is it going to be going? Well, you can calculate its speed because this VE represents the kinetic energy. Right? And so if you wanted to, if you're told like the voltage uh, that it goes through, or if you're told the charge of the particle, because it could be any particle, uh, then you can actually calculate its speed. I don't know, you might be asked, what's its kinetic energy? Well, it's just V times E. Or what's its speed? You can use that to actually get its speed. So maybe we better just put in what everything is. So V equals the potential difference. In other words, that's the voltage. So it's measured in volts. E is just the charge of the particle. So in this case right here, it's measured in coulombs. If you want the charge of an electron, that's on your uh, data booklet. It's right near, it's one of the first pages. So I put an E with a little minus just to tell me that's an electron. Those have a negative charge. And that number is actually well known. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs of charge. Now, of course, m, well, that's the mass of the particle. And that's going to be in kilograms. So this could be an electron. We know the mass of an electron. It's about 9 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, so really small. Uh, but it could be a proton. It could be a anything, as long as you know its mass and you know its charge. And of course, v is going to be the speed of the particle. So this really comes in handy. The speed, by the way, is still meters per second. But what I want to show you then is what 1 eV is. Because this is going to be useful actually in nuclear physics. So 1 eV then, see, E times V is a unit of energy. That's why in particle physics, it turns out, and in nuclear physics, we measure energies in electron volts. We don't use joules. Electron volts are actually much more handy. They're actually much more useful to physicists who are actually working with these uh, uh, quantities. So 1 eV then is just 
Well, it's 1 times the charge of an electron, so 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, times 1 volt. That's what 1 EV is. In other words, 1 EV, if you want to convert that to joules, it's real easy. All right, it's just 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. That is very handy because it turns out a coulomb uh, volt is also the same thing as a joule. So this sort of explains where this weird unit of energy, electron volts, comes from. Okay, hopefully this makes some sense to you. But um, this is actually, it, it may seem a weird unit, but it is a unit of energy. And we define it basically as yeah, the energy of an electron that's been accelerated across that uh, potential difference of one volt. So to find out what one EV is, you take one times E, which is this, times one volt, which is just one. And it just changes the units. It goes from coulombs, it becomes joules, because now that's a unit of energy. That's really handy in uh, nuclear particle physics. And you might have heard about, uh, you know, on the news a lot of times there's things about uh, CERN. This is this uh, big uh, particle accelerator in Geneva. Uh, uh, for example, there's a large hadron collider. And there they're talking about, you know, trying to find different particles. At the moment they're trying to look for the Higgs boson, for example. Um, and that, they're always talking about, oh, well, we may have found it, or maybe we didn't, but at least we know it's going to have an energy between this MeV and that MeV, or even giga electron volts. So what this means, this is a unit. This is the unit right here they're talking about. So one MeV is just a million of these. So you just have to multiply this by 10 to the 6. Um, and you can have a giga electron volt. Well, now let's multiply this by 10 to the 9. You can have whatever you want. You can have KEVs. I've seen some of those units in my own physics studies. So sometimes we had things in KEVs, which is kilo electron volts. So multiply this by a thousand. See how useful this is, though. This equation right here really comes in handy in all sorts of weird looking questions where you might not think you can use it. So this is, I think, uh, yeah. a surprisingly helpful equation.